Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for this session today. I'm your host, Mala Gupta. I work as a developer advocate with JetBrains, and what that essentially means is that I help developers like you become more productive by using IntelliJ IDEA in the best possible manner. I'm also a Java champion and an author. And today I'm pleased to welcome Ivan Lopev, Senior Software Engineer with Object Computing. Hi Ivan, thanks for presenting today. Hello Mala. Thank you for having me. And Ivan will talk about how to develop Micronaut applications with IntelliJ IDEA. And before I let take Ivan the stage, let me share some quick details. Uh, everyone, you can use the chat to post your questions. Um, I and JetBrains team will be here to answer your questions as you post them. And Ivan will take quick breaks while presenting his session to answer your questions. And the session will be recorded and hosted to IntelliJ IDEA's YouTube channel. So Ivan, I'll let you take the stage now. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today in this session about developing Micronaut applications with IntelliJ IDEA. Um, before I start, I would like to kind of set the expectations so we are on in the same page. Um, so this is not a talk about IntelliJ IDEA per se, right? You are not going to learn how IntelliJ works. I will assume that you are using IntelliJ and you want to, to learn more about the Micronaut and IntelliJ IDEA uh, integration. So even though, again, having said that, uh, you, I am, I'm, on logo, I'm also going to show you a few things that you could use uh, with IntelliJ IDEA, even if you are not using uh, Micronaut. And by the way, if you are uh, interested in learning IntelliJ IDEA features and tricks, uh, I can recommend you to follow Mala, Trisha, and, and their team because they do a lot of videos about this. So um, uh, let's get uh, started. Uh, so first, I will introduce myself very quickly. I'm Ivan Lopez, Lomar on Twitter. I work at Object Computing. OCI is the company uh, behind both Grails and Micronaut frameworks. I am based in Madrid, in Spain, and I'm a core member of the Micronaut team. I also run the, the Groovy user group here in, in Madrid. Uh, so what I'm going to do before, before going live to the, to the ID is uh, explaining in, in just two slides uh, what is Micronaut, how it works, and a few things. So everyone is on the, on the same page. And even if you don't know about anything about Micronaut, uh, you can follow the rest of, of the webinar. So basically, Micronaut is a new framework for microservices, not only microservices, uh, for the JVM. Uh, Graham Rosé created the framework, and you may know him because he also created uh, Grails. And with all the experience he gained maintaining and evolving Grails over more than 10 years, uh, he wanted to create a new framework uh, based on, on, on that or, or with, with all that experience. Uh, if you don't know Grails, Grails is built on top of Spring Boot. so we are We've been using a Spring and a Spring Framework for a lot of years. Uh, we like that programming model. Uh, we are heavy users of that, especially with, with Grails. So uh, we wanted to have uh, the framework really, really ultra lightweight, ultra lightweight without uh, spending too much memory or, or doing a lot of things like, like other frameworks do. So uh, Microt is a reactive framework. It's based on Netty. Although if you don't want, you don't need to to develop your applications in a reactive way. And even you don't even need to use Netty if you don't want. You can you can also use Tomcat or Yeti or Undertow or another uh, servlet uh, servers, right? And as a developer, you can choose any of the three main languages for the JVM. So you can develop your application with Java, Ruby, or, or Kotlin. And we wanted to be the framework to be familiar, especially for, for Spring developers. We, as I said, we have a strong background with Spring. So if you know Spring uh, or Spring Boot, you will be like home with using Micronaut because everything will be really, really familiar for you. We have the same concepts, dependency injection, controllers, uh, repositories. It's pretty much the same, right? Uh, so the main difference or the, the key feature about Micronaut is that we use this uh, ahead of time compilation. So what, what happens, so the difference is that uh, traditional um, JVM annotation-based JVM frameworks like Spring or Microprofile, what they do is that when, when you start your application, 
the framework needs to, to read and analyze the bytecode of your application to, to basically understand your, your application, right? If you put an a controller, a service, auto configuration, all those kinds of all those all those kinds of annotations, the framework needs to know. And those frameworks do that at runtime. When you start your application, they need to analyze uh, all your code and and cache all that information into memory to, to really understand how your application works, right? When you have a dependency injection and you inject a service, the framework needs to know how, how that works. So the problem with that is that uh, for Hello World application, everything is faster and all the applications start in sub-second. But when you have a real world application with real code uh, and you start your application, the framework needs to read more and more and more code, more and more and more beans, and load all that information into memory, right? So eventually, when you have more code, your application will take more time to start because the framework needs to read more code and analyze. And also, it will consume more, me more memory uh, because it will need to cache all that meta information in memory, right? So what Micro does is, uh, so instead of doing that at runtime, when you compile your Micro application, the framework generates a few classes that uh, have all the information that the framework needs. So when you start your Micro application, the framework doesn't need to do anything at runtime, pretty much anything. Because all the meta information to understand your application, it's already generated. So it's it's already there. There are classes to represent that. So we don't we don't need to cache anything into memory because uh, the classes already exist. Uh, this means that uh, we don't use these tools or techniques that uh, traditional frameworks use. Right in Micronaut, there is no reflection, there is no runtime proxies, no dynamic class loading, no dynamic bytecode generation, nothing like that. Because we don't need it. We precompute everything ahead of time. With this, what we achieve is that micro applications start really, really fast. Because as I said, uh, the framework doesn't need to do anything or pretty much anything when, when you start your application. The framework needs to evaluate the environment uh, and, and, and really nothing else. And also, you have low memory footprint in your applications because as I said, we don't cache all that meta information in, into memory. It's already there. It's, it's generated at, at compile time. Uh, we also uh, wanted to build a framework natively cloud native and for serverless. This, this means that uh, when you are, I mean, you are a developer, if you are using a framework in 2020, uh, I think you, you, sh you should have or you, you want to have or the framework to provide you uh, a lot of things, right? So we have server discovery. We, we follow this pattern called 12, 12 factor apps. Uh, we have externalized configuration with console, with Eureka. Uh, we have a built-in HTTP client with load balancing, with retries, uh, circuit breaker. We have distributed tracing with Zipkin, with Jagger. We have integration with a lot of third-party libraries. We have security. So everything that you will need for, for basically focusing on solving your business project and, and kind of forget about the framework, just using it, we, we have integrations for a lot of things. right? Um, we also have this tool or this li other library we call Microdata. Uh, so if you know about the Spring, you probably have used Spring Data uh, to access your database or your, or your data source. And Microdata is the same, right? So um, what we do and what Spring does is you define an interface and the framework implements that, that interface for you. So you have an interface, a method, on an interface, a user repository interface, and the method name is find all by name. And under the hood, uh, the framework will create a, a SQL query, something like select a star from user where name equals whatever, right? The difference again is that uh, Spring Data does all that at runtime. And in Micronaut, we pre-compute all those, those SQL queries during compilation time. So again, uh, there is no runtime proxies. There is nothing like that. And when you are executing your, your Micronaut application with Micronaut data and you access your database, the only thing that we need to do is basically go to the bytecode that is already there, pick up the SQL, do the parameter binding, and execute it. So it's a really uh, lightweight uh, layer to execute uh, and to access to, to um, SQL database. So this is really, really performant. We also have support out of the box for GraalVM 
uh, native images. Uh, I don't know if you are aware of this. This is uh, coming from, from Record Labs. And what a uh, native image is, is that basically you can convert your Java application into a binary of, the, of your target platform, uh, Linux, Windows, or Mac, right? It's a binary, an executable of that platform, which don't, doesn't have any dependency on the JVM. So it starts really, really fast, like we are talking about an application can start in around 20, 25 milliseconds. And the memory consumption is really, really low. So we have support for our Guardian out of the box since, since 1.0, so for almost two years ago. And we improve the support in every new release of Micronaut. And we are working with the Gravium team to, to increase and to improve the, the support. Uh, Micronaut is a uh, Apache 2 license, no strings attached. So you can use whatever you want. Uh, we have released more than 25 releases. The first one, uh, 1.0, was released in October 2018, so almost two years ago. Um, we have a lot of external contributors, so it's not only us working on the framework. A lot of people are using the framework and, and they are sending amazing pull requests. We have received really, really uh, interesting contributions for, from community. And we have a few modules that are maintained by, by contributors in the community. The JMS module, Apache Ignite, uh, Micrometer, Acme, GraphQL. So a lot of um, uh, contributors from, from the community. Our last stable release is 2.0.2, which was released last week. And the next one, the next minor one, will be 2.1.0 that will be hopefully released at, at the end of, of this month, right? So before going to the IDE, uh, do we have any questions so far, Mala? I take that as a no. So um, let's go here. So uh, if you want to, to, to start or to create a micro application, um, you have different options, right? Be before going into the IDE, uh, what I want to show you, we have a, a CLI tool that will bootstrap an application with the different options and features you want to add. So uh, it's called MN. You can, you can install it using SDK Manager. If you don't know about this, this tool, uh, I recommend you to, to take a look. It's basically a, a, an SDK manager, a, as the name implies. And you have a lot of things. So for example, you can see uh, Java releases. So Java 15 was released uh, two or three days ago, and it's already there. So you can just install this Java version, SDK install Java, and put the name. You can install Java version from different platforms uh, and vendors, and you can just switch from one to another. So uh, there is a lot of tools and libraries in the JVM ecosystem that use SDK to distribute their binaries. Uh, Groovy, Grails, Micronaut, Spring Boot, Kotlin, Maven, a lot of tools. So I recommend you to use this. And if you install uh, the CLI, you can run it with an ML. And you can create here if you want an app, foo. And you can pass, for example, features. And you have seen a lot of features that we add, right? So this is one way to bootstrap and to create a new Micronaut application. But if you don't want to, uh, to install the CLI tool, what we also have is we, we launched this space, this, this launcher, launch.micronaut.io, and which is built on top of the same code that I show you in the, in the CLI. They, they both share the same, the same core library under the hood in which you can select the different, the different things, right? You can select the application, the type of the application you want, Java version, uh, the, the language, the build tool, and the testing framework, and the different versions. And here you can select any uh, feature. So if you want to add micro data JDBC, you can do it. And then clicking here, it will generate the same project as the CLI does. With preview, you have a, a nice preview of, of everything that is going to be generated. So you don't even need to, to generate if you only want to check something. And with the div button, you will have a difference because as I added uh, the data JDBC, Dependency, you can see here the diff based on the on the very basic application. So we have this dependency and we added data JDBC. We put a hickory for connection for data so database pool and things like that, right? So you can do it this this way, or the other way is uh, you can go directly to 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 IntelliJ IDEA. So uh, if you go to File New and create a new project, 
Uh, this will open the wizard to create different projects for different tools and frameworks. So you can select here Micronaut and pick the Java version you want. I'm going to, to use the latest JDK 11, although Micronaut uh, supports up to JDK 15. So if you, are one, if you want to live on the bleeding edge uh, JDK version, it's perfectly fine, it works. I will stick with uh, the, the, uh, this LTA version. By default, as you can see, uh, this wizard inside IntelliJ uses the same uh, API that we expose in this launcher website I show you, right? And here you can define a custom one. You can this, this launcher is an open source project. It's available on, on our GitHub repository. Um, so you can fork it and you can have a custom one if you want for your organization and you can use it here inside IntelliJ. I will use the, the default one. So, uh, and as you can see, this is pretty much what I showed you before in the launch web page. We can select the build tool, maybe our Gradle, define the group ID of our artifact, uh, the name, the application. So, as I, as I mentioned during the slide, uh, Micronaut is not only for creating, uh, it's not only a framework for creating uh, microservices. You can create uh, CLI applications using the framework. You can create serverless application that you want to deploy, for example, to AWS Lambda or to Google Cloud Function or Azure Function or, on, or Oracle Cloud Function. We support that. Uh, you can have gRPC applications instead of, of, of using by default an, an HTTP server like Netty or Tomcat. You can use gRPC or you can use both if you want. Or you can create messaging application based on top of uh, RabbitMQ or Kafka or Nats or things like that. I will create a basic uh, web application. Uh, again, you can select the JDK version you want, 11, the different frameworks, I will go with Java, and the different test frameworks, I will go with Spock, although I don't, I'm not going to show you probably test today. So next, next screen is, uh, as I show you in the launcher, you can select the features you want, right? And one nice thing about this is that this is inside IntelliJ, right? So everything that you are used to, to use inside your, your IDE, you can use it here. So if I just click data, you have here uh, basically the auto-completion for this. But what I always use when I, when I create applications uh, using the wizard is control F because I go here to the, to the feature search and I just write without using the mouse, which is what I want, I can, I can create new applications. So I can, I can add Micronotata JDBC, hit enter. You can see it's added here as a selected feature. I also want to add the management endpoints. Uh, and I also want to add, for example, as I'm going to use a, a database, I want to use, for example, MySQL. And for testing, right, I want to use, for example, test containers. So you can do this, or you can go through the different uh, categories to see the different options that we have. One important thing that you need to know, uh, and this applies for this wizard and also for the launcher web, web page, is that um, we, if you don't select uh, kind of mandatory features, we will select those for you, right? So you can see that I am not selecting any HTTP server. So by default, once you create this application, we will select Netty for you. So it's in this case, it's the same selecting Netty or not. Uh, if you want Tomcat, you can add Tomcat, but if you select both of them, Netty uh, and Tomcat, what will happen is that we will raise an error, right? Because you, don't, you, don't, you cannot have both of them. So it doesn't matter if I select any or none. And you have here the different, the different um, categories. So you have our HTTP client or the Netflix ribbon. We have a lot of different tools for, for the database. So we can add, for example, Flyway to run our migrations. You can see here uh, different connection pools. So by default, we use uh, Hickory, but may you prefer Tomcat or Apache Commons or Oracle uh, UCP connection pool. You can use anything you want. Uh, the same for login. By default, we use logback. We have security, as I said, uh, messaging, Kafka. You can see there is a lot of different tools, for example, for rendering uh, server site uh, templates, HTML, FreeMarker, Handlebars, Rocker. There is a lot of things. So I think we are good with these um, six that we have here. So go next. And this is the project name apps uh, let's put test apps here and i'm going to finish this okay create a directory and as you can see uh 
it's uh, IntelliJ, it's importing uh, the source code. It has created the directory test apps demo with my, with my application. Uh, the, Gradle, the Gradle daemon is, is running and it's um, loading and configuring my, my project. Uh, so one thing uh, you should be aware during this, this demo, uh, I am screen sharing everything with you, right? So basically, uh, my laptop is using a lot of CPU for the screen share. So when you are doing uh, this at home, right, or at work, everything will be faster. So uh, don't think that this is an error on IntelliJ or this is an error on Micronaut. This is basically because I'm sharing my screen and, and, and yeah, I'm using a lot of CPU of, of doing that. So uh, the project is loaded and we have here the same structure that I showed you uh, before um, with, uh, with the launcher, with the preview. So we generate a Docker file for you. We have the bit.gradle with all the dependencies that we added, right? Flyway, Hikari, Micro data, everything is here. And we follow the same structure. We selected Java. And uh, we have, we also create uh, a test that basically uh, check that the application runs. So we can run uh, our test directly from the IDE if we want. This, this works as you expect. Uh, this is going to take a few seconds also because if you remember, I selected my SQL and I selected test containers. So what we do basically is configure everything for you for the test environment to use um, test containers, MySQL to, to do integration tests with, with the database with MySQL. So what this is going to do after compilation, which is already finished, is it's going to start the Docker container uh, with the MySQL and then it will stop it. So as you can see here, if I increase this, it created the Hikari pool and now test container is running. It tries to run the, what is it? Um, connecting to Docker, Ryuk, and you can see here my SQL 8 by default. So it started the, um, the database inside Docker container for my tests. I don't have any flyway migration, but if I have any migration, it will be run for the test and then we should done everything, right? So you can see that it took 15 seconds to, to start the container in this case. But the test itself ran in less than one second. And this test uh, start a real embedded application. So what else uh, I can show you now? Uh, I, uh, what, I can go in, what I'm going to do is create a very, very basic hello world just to show you uh, for all, for those of you that don't know about my, uh, Micronaut, I'm going to show you a hello world to, to take a look at, at, the, at the source code and, and how it looks like uh, a hello world micro application. So let's create a hello controller. We annotate it with that controller. We can put here uh, the root URI. This is the default. You can see that this is it's in light gray in IntelliJ because sets that is the default. So you can leave it. You can remove it if you want. And what I want to get is a, I want to expose a get endpoint, um, and I want to expose it in this hello name. And by default, Micronaut will consume and produce by default JSON. But in this case, I'm going to just uh, media type um, text plane. I'm just going to return a hello world, so it will be media media uh, text plane. I need to tell that uh, because if if I don't put this, uh, Micronaut will set the response header to the content type application JSON, and I don't want that. So public string say hi string name. And I can put here, hello, right name. So this is the very basic, but uh, you don't put business logic on controllers, right? Even though this is a very, very simple business logic, what you do is you put business logic in, in services. So instead of putting this here, I'm going to create a new class, uh, hello service. And I annotate it with that singleton, Java inject singleton. So this, is, will, this will be a micronaut singleton bin, and the framework will manage this class for ourselves. And here, speak, say hi. Um, and I do the return here, right? And then I can go back to my controller and just inject private final hello service. And then uh, just uh, call it return hello service, say hi name, right? Uh, this is basic uh, dependency injection. So as you can see, 
Uh, we don't need to put here at inject. You can put it, but it doesn't, it's not necessarily. Uh, by default, or not by default, uh, what we recommend is always use constructor injection because with constructor injection, you can define your dependencies as final. And you can also be sure that when you create an instance of this controller, in this case, the framework will create the instance of the controller for you, but uh, for the service, uh, you can do it. Uh, you will pass the right dependencies. We also support field injection, so you can annotate this with that inject and remove the constructor, or you can use set an injection if you want. But we always recommend to use uh, constructor injection. Remember that every time you use field injection, uh, kit and die, so please don't do that. Uh, so with this, what I can do is, as usual, I can start my application just from the IDE. I click here, and now it failed. Why it failed? Because uh, remember, I added my SQL, right? So it tries to connect to a MySQL database, and it tries to connect because in the in the configuration file we put this for you. Uh, uh, the, the default, as I selected my SQL. We have the default uh, URL connection and the driver and everything. So uh, let's put this and this because let me real quick uh, Docker start. I have a MySQL server here. So uh, I have a demo database with this super secret password, right? So if I go back here and restart the application, you will see that now it should start. It initialized the um, Hikari pool and it connects to the database and the application is up and running localhost 8080 by default. Uh, you see that it took uh, a little bit more than one and a half second. This is, uh, remember again, because of the screen sharing, um, in in modern hardware, hardware, this laptop is four years old, it takes uh, uh, less than a second. So you can start this Hello World application in, in less than a second, which is really, really good. So now that we have this application up and running, uh, what we can do is we can send here a request, right? Hello, Micronaut, and it returns hello, or I can put hello, JetBrains, right? And it works. But to test these kind of things, what I did was going out to the IDE and go to the browser. And sometimes you don't want to do that, right? You you can, if, if I can do anything in the IDE, most of the time I, I like to do that. So what I can do, let's minimize this. I can open my controller, and, and, and as you can see, uh, IntelliJ knows about uh, Micronaut, so it knows that this is a, an HTTP controller, and it knows uh, that this is a public endpoint of my application, right? So what I can do is I can click on this icon on the gutter, and IntelliJ will open this internal HTTP client, so I can select uh, in which, um, Server is running my application, so it's localhost 8080. And I can put here, I can replace that with a variable, but it's faster to do this, right? Hello, Micronaut. And I can send this request to my running server, which is running here, right? I didn't stop it. So you see uh, response 200 OK, content type to explain, because I said that in the controller. Uh, and hello, Micronaut. And the nice thing about this, this HTTP, um, Client is that you can use again all the all the shortcuts and everything that you are used to in, inside the IDE, right? So I can control C and I can do this, and I have just duplicated, so I can say hello JetBrains. I run it, right? So I have two of them, or I can modify this one, and as I modify it and run it again, I have two executions of the same endpoint. So I can click here, and and I have comparison of the output. So if you are testing different APIs and you want to to check what changes or things like that, you can use the same tools that you are used to during your your day to day work with with IntelliJ, right? In this case, you are using this div tool to to check the difference among the the different outputs of this embedded HTTP client. Uh, so you don't even need to go outside or open the terminal here to send a curl. If you have a curl request, you can click here, paste it here, convert, and IntelliJ will convert this curl request to the compatible one here. And if you are not sure how this works, in these examples, you have, for example, uh, if you want to use authorization or if you want to send a post request, this is how you do it, right? You can send the content type as application JSON, and this is a JSON. So uh, when you submit this, um, 
IntelliJ will send the right request to your application or to whatever. You don't even need to do uh, to use here your application. You can put here any uh, endpoint you want, uh, and that's all. And you can save all these things if you want in, in source control and share that with, with, your, with your whole team, right? Uh, so yeah, let's take a moment. Uh, any questions so far? Um, yes, loads of them. And Yuri is asking a lot of questions on uh, YouTube already. So I have uh, a couple for you. So a question okay. is, I'm exploring Micronode and couldn't find a way to do REST exposed from repositories as string data. Is there any feature like that or coming in the future? So what you can do if you use um, Micronode data or you can, so basically what you can, uh, here I'm, I'm I'm exposing or, or using a service. So what you can do if you can inject here, if you want the repository, just return it. But for me, that doing that, it's kind of ugly, you know. Uh, me personally, when I when I'm working and doing um, creating applications using Micronaut, I never expose my repositories to the HTTP layers. I always use an intermediate uh, service layer, even if it's just doing things like this, right? I call my service to find all users by name. And in my service, I inject my repository and call repository.find users by name. Even with that simple case, I prefer to have an interface with here with my repository and inject, sorry, sorry, with my service, inject my service and, and hide everything inside that because it's easier to test and it's easier to maintain in the future. Uh, if you have new features in the future, you don't need to modify this. You modify everything inside the service, and the HTTP layer shouldn't be aware of any of those. Right, makes sense. Uh, so the other question is from um, a Scala developer. So he's asking, any plans to support Scala out of the box in the way Groovy, Kotlin, and Java are? Yeah, very, very nice question. So um, I forgot to mention, so when I, when I said that Micronaut works using this AOT ahead of time compilation, what we do is during compilation, we use the standard Java annotation processor to hook into the compiler, the Java compiler, uh, to basically analyze all your source code and, and generate these classes that we need, that the framework needs. So for Java and Kotlin, we use that, uh, the annotation processor tool. And for Groovy, what we use is uh, the AST transformations, or right, we hook in, it's pretty much the same, but, but that's how Groovy works. And we did that because remember, we have a long past of Grails and Groovy. So we really know how Groovy works under the hood. So for a Scala support, there is no annotation processor support. So what we need to do is hook into the Scala compiler the same way we do with Groovy. And we don't have that expertise in the team. We, are, we don't know Scala that much. So there is an open issue uh, for supporting Scala. It's in our roadmap, uh, but it's somewhat, something that we probably can work with some folks from the community in the future because um, it will be probably not easy to, to really start working on that, but we know that, and we know that there is people, uh, Scala developers that wants to use Micronaut. So take a look at that issue on, on the core repository and give there a thumbs up or things like that if you are, if you're interested, but yeah, it's, it's an old roadmap. Uh, thanks. So it's like uh, be the change you want to see. So if uh, any any of the person who's attending is uh, good to contribute, they are welcome, and they Sorry. can ping Ivan for that. So yeah. the next question is: How does Micronaut behave with Lombok? Yeah, uh, we support Lombok. Um, the only thing you need to do if you go, I'm showing here Gradle. Uh, it's the same for Maven. So these are the annotation processor we have. Well, actually, these three. So what you need to do is put Lombok here before, or actually here, right? Before Micronaut annotation processors, because Lombok will modify everything. And when we run our annotation processor, we need to run it with the code that Lombok generated. So it works. The only trick is putting Lombok before uh, our annotation processor. And the same applies for, for Maven. Uh, thanks, Ivana. I'll let you uh, move forward with your sessions. So okay. these were the interesting questions that I had for now. Perfect. Um, OK, so let's continue. Um, so next thing I'm going to show you, uh, if you remember, I added, uh, it's here actually, the management endpoint. So this dependency, what it adds is this 
typical uh, management endpoints that you have in your application. So info, beans, health environment, things like that, right? To, 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 to check how your application is behaving, for example, when you deploy this to Kubernetes and you have to have this health endpoint so the cluster is aware if your application is running or not to create a new pod or all things like that. So we can go, uh, if I go here and set, for example, uh, info, uh, you can see that this throws a 401 because by default, all endpoints are sensitive, meaning that uh, you need to be locked into the application or you need to configure them to, uh, uh, to allow um, anonymous access. So you can open the, uh, your application and what you can do here, I click control space and we have uh, IntelliJ have this really, really nice auto completion for the properties. So I can say endpoints, all the enable, I'm going to enable all of them and I'm going to also set this sensitive to false because I want to add, I want to allow um, anonymous users to access to the endpoints. For development, this is fine. For production, you don't probably want to, to do things like that, right? That's why by default, we put safe configuration. So even if you don't configure everything, your application uh, management endpoints are not exposed in production. So with that, I can restart, uh, what is it? I can restart the application and we can go here, right? So info by default, it doesn't return anything. You can put here, you can add additional, additional information. You can get, for example, the beans uh, defined in the application. So for example, you can see that my hello controller depends on the hello service I created. There is another hello service, which is a singleton and different things that the hickory, different uh, uh, beans that Micronaut provides. Uh, we have the health endpoint, right? And by default, this is also special because we can say it's up, your application is up and running, but you can also uh, configure this specific endpoint to add more, more information. So there is here another property, which is, um, which one? Discovery client. I never remember, sorry. Uh, disk space, I think is this, this one, sorry, the first one. Details visible, right? And you can set, I want to set all the details to anonymous. One one thing, uh, let me let me restart the application. So one thing about this integration, uh, you saw that there is uh, an explanation of, of the of the of the different key, and you can control click right and go directly to the source code. So here we are setting uh, these details visible, and you can see that by default, details visible requires an authenticated user, right? So I've restarted the application. If I reload the web page, now you can see more information. We can see the disk space and we can see all the information of the JDBC connection. So it's up and running. This is the URL I, connect, I use and this is the MySQL version I'm, I'm using, right? So you can have different, different um, uh, um, endpoints or, or different things can contribute to, to this uh, endpoint, health, health endpoint. Um, so what else? Let me stop this. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to switch to another project. I don't want to update. So uh, one thing I forgot to mention, I'm using not the latest 2020.2 because there is, um, you, you saw here, uh, I didn't upgrade it, but yeah, the latest previous release candidate or things like that. Starting with 2020.2, Intel EA Ultimate Edition, you have all these uh, Micronaut uh, integration. So this is a project I have. Uh, I, I've been working on. Uh, I cannot share the source code of this of this project, but I can show the code during this webinar. And I'm I'm switched to this because this is a, a real a real world project. So you can see there is code here, right? It's not a hello world. And I'm going to use this because it allows me to show you more features with with real data, not just with a hello world. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, I just open the terminal. So. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, the, this project is developed in Java. We have roughly almost 10,000 lines of code. It's tested with a spoke. That's why we have 10,000 10, lines of Groovy code. And we have yeah, Gradle or ASCII doctor or a few velocity templates and things like that, right? So this is, uh, it's not big project. It's not so, it's not a small, right? Some kind of things. So uh, what I'm going to show you with this project continuing with the auto completion is that 
Uh, let me do this. Right, so you can see there is a lot of configuration we have in this project. And we created a specific configuration for the project, which is under this Transport 360 and under this EOS key. Uh, I can, again, control space here. And there is no suggestion because I am using everything. But what I can do, I can create a new section in this YAML configuration file. And you can see now that there is auto-completion. All this auto-completion and all this information here, um, MQTT broker URL, return the broker URL with port, with protocol and port. All this is coming. So I can put this one. And again, control click in this leads me to this class. And this class, as you can see here, is inside my source code. So this works because uh, this is a, a configuration property class. In Micronaut, we use this to define to a way to group related configurations. And, and instead of, in, uh, of injecting this broker URL or the client ID anywhere in the code, I can inject this and get all this configuration, right? And as you can see again, Micronaut, sorry, uh, IntelliJ IDEA knows that this is a configuration properties and it treats like that. So anything that is here, it's automatically available for IntelliJ to show in the, um, in the application uh, YAML or application properties or whatever thing you are using for configure your application. But uh, you can also do more things. So for example, if I go to these EOS keys, uh, you can see here that there are some default values. So I have a five here, two minutes, uh, CST, different things, right? So I can go back here to the code and we have this default connection timeout, which is five, right? So imagine that you want to change this to, to another value, for example, 15. I change it. And if I go back to the application, and I do this, it's a still five, right? Intel J still doesn't know that I did this change. So why it doesn't know and how this works? What we do when you when when we compile uh, any Micronaut application and, and Micronaut itself is that we generate uh, a class here, a file in the meta directory called Spring Configuration Metadata. This JSON, it's compatible with Spring, it's the same format. And we put here everything about uh, the configuration properties. So uh, IntelliJ IDEA and other editors or IDEs can read this configuration file to be able to generate the appropriate auto-completion. So as I modified this class, what I need to do, I'm going to run the Gradle uh, compile Java task. I just need to recompile my class because when, when we recompile this class, uh, basically the, the code, uh, we are going to regenerate this application, this file, and IntelliJ will be able to read this class or this JSON file and show me the right default this 15 in the in the completion. Uh, this project takes a few more seconds to compile uh, because, as I said, it's a real project. So one thing that we have is, uh, for example, we use OpenAPI. If you know about uh, maybe uh, you know about Swagger, so Swagger version two, when we when they switch from Swagger two to the three version, they rename the project to OpenAPI. And Swagger is like the open API is a, is a kind of a standard or a specification, and Swagger is like the default implementation. So we we also you see that we generate an API and an Swagger on an open API compatible YAML file, and we have the views, and these are generated, for example, here. So this this file, um, this is an open API 3.0.1 uh, compatible. You can copy and paste this into any editor, and you will see all the endpoints and everything there. So going back to my configuration, now uh, I can, you can see here that the default value was changed to 15, right? Because when I recompile everything, uh, we generated this file and IntelliJ read the new version. What else I want to show you? Um, so um, there's one thing, give me, let me go back from presentation mode one second. So you can see here on the bottom, these endpoints tab. So if you are in presentation mode, you can control, you can do here endpoints, right? It's the same. You can click there and you will see this. And this shows all the endpoints available for your, in your application. And I have grouped them, grouped them into, into cases for my source code, my production code, and for the test. So I can say in my server side, this is the Micronet HTTP server, and you can see here, all the endpoints in all my controllers. So I have shipment uh, to get the shipment, the alerts by shipment. 
ID, or I have here this shipment to that shows me all the images related to the shipment, and I can control double click here, and I go directly to the um, to the controller, right? And again, IntelliJ knows about this. I can open this in the embedded HTTP uh, client. You can see here all of this is uh, because of the Open API. So these annotations are Open API or Swagger API uh, Swagger annotations. So when, when you compile your application, we read these annotations and generate the appropriate output. Uh, if you don't put any of anything like this, and you put Java code, Java, Java doc in this method, we will extract that information from the Java doc and we will generate the, the same or pretty much the same Swagger API documentation. But sometimes it's easier and faster to, to just uh, do this, right? Because you can add different response codes are, and, and more information to your, to your open API. But if you, don't, if you don't want, you can do this. And you can see also the client. So I have HTTP client for, for communicating with this EOS uh, API. So I can see here where this is used and the same for my tests. So I can see here that you can see in green. In all these places, I'm creating a micronode embedded server for, for testing something, right? So this is, uh, in this case, this is, um, a controller, but this is for a test because I want to mock something. Um, what else? So this is this this endpoint. This endpoint view is, is really really helpful, especially uh, this one, because it allows you to navigate through all your different controllers and see everything. Uh, so speaking about controllers, um, you can see uh, as I show you that IntelliJ know that this is a controller, and you can show. Let me do this. Uh, that I am injecting here, uh, I'm out of war independencies. So you have two options if you want to navigate to the final thing. You can click here, but if you control click here, you will go to the interface, which is probably not what you want, right? You want to go to the implementation. And, and as you can see, I have different implementation for tests and one for production. So in, instead of going here, you can just click here and IntelliJ will uh, uh, link you to the, to, the, to the right implementation in this case. So it's faster than, than the other way. And what else? Uh, yeah. So for example, um, yeah, new alert. If you create uh, events inside your application, uh, you can extend from this class. This is a micronaut class, right? So this will be a new event that you can throw inside your micronaut application to when something happens. So you can see the new icon on the gutter. This is an event class. So it's helpful when you have different classes. Just take a look at the icon here, uh, because you you will be able to see pretty fast uh, the type of, of class. And when you have an event, you may want to to have a listener, right? Uh, so this is a listener because I'm implementing this application event listener for for this class I show you. I need to implement this on on application event method. And as you can see, there is a new icon here uh, that says navigate to event publisher. So if I click here. I, I'm, I'm listening in this in this method for, for this new alert event. So if I click here, I go directly to another class in which I'm publishing this event. So you don't need to, to remember, right? right? Because maybe you don't remember from which places did I throw or publish those events? Just let the IDE help you um, with that. And, and again, here you can see this navigating to, to the listeners. I only have one. So it, I, I can go back and forward for these classes. But if you have more, you, you have here uh, the different pop-ups to, to select the different, um, the different classes. Uh, the same happen if you have, for example, a schedule job. So you can have a method annotated with a schedule. And you have an, an, a new icon saying this is a schedule method. Uh, and you have here different options. You can put a cron time expression, initial delays, different different things. And last thing I have here for you is, uh, for example, a factory. Uh, not this one, sorry. Uh, Porter creation factory. So if you have, um, sorry, I don't know how to type today. Porter validation factory. So if you create a factory class, which is used in micro to create bins of different types. You have again a new icon saying this is a factory class. So you can, you can, uh, if you have different classes open, you can see the, the, the different um, icons and distinguish different classes. Uh, and the last thing, and then I open the mic for questions, is that uh, of course 
you can always run your tests inside your ID, right? So I can run the test. This is going to take a few minutes because uh, it will start the, the uh, test containers and we have a lot of integration tests. So I can leave it running. And now we can, I can take more questions before I finish with my slides. Thank you, Ivan. So there are a lot of questions which Yuri is uh, answering, Yuri and Robert are answering on YouTube. So the interesting ones for you are, um, any tips on how to rebug classes generated by Micronaut annotation processor? How to leave out classes? Um, any tips on how to debug classes? Oh, debug classes, are... yeah. yeah. Um, it's tricky, right? Because you can see, uh, yeah, let me minimize this. So uh, for this project, you can see uh, I can open any, come on. So for example, for my controllers, you can see there is a lot of different classes with, with different things that the framework needs, right? So uh, it's tricky to debug this. And most of the time, you probably don't need it. So if you think that you need to debug one of these classes, I, I, I'm not going to say that you are doing something wrong, because it may not. But most of the time, is something a misconfiguration and things like that because if this if this uh bytecode is not generated property nothing will work so i'm not saying that we cannot have bugs in here uh but it can be tricky so i pretty much never try to to debug this and i haven't actually needed it um so i uh, yeah i think that if you put a breakpoint here i think it won't work because how things work so yeah I'm sorry, but I cannot help you with, with this one. Right. And we already have uh, a lot of uh, two, three videos on uh, screencast on debugging, uh, how to use the debugger in IntelliJ IDEA. So if you're interested, you can watch those uh, screencasts and probably that could give you tips on how to do that. Yeah, you can see before the, before the next question, you can see I'm running tests. And you can see the time, uh, 100 something milliseconds, 20 milliseconds. Most of the tests that you see here, even even so that I can I can stop in one. So this one, um, you can see I'm uh, putting data. Uh, this is an integration test that is run the flyway migrations, put data on the database, uh, do some queries and check things. And you can see how fast they run. And in this specific project, a uh, project uh, we had something like. 600 tests, 90% uh, of them are integration or functional. And with my screen share, they took probably a couple of minutes to run uh, all of them, right? So running tests with Micronaut is really, really fast because of this startup uh, that I mentioned before. So yeah, next question. All right, so does Micronaut support Warden? Uh, I don't know what is that. Um, you can create uh, your web pages using Warden, if I'm not wrong. So that's a framework. OK, so that's OK. We can skip that question. Uh, so the other question is uh, an attendee wants to uh, find out the example project on GitHub. So I know you mentioned that you cannot uh, share the yeah. source code of the so one that you are sharing right now. So probably this one, yeah, this one is private. Yes, yeah, so probably they're looking for um, other example codes. So I can website? share. I can share because I did. Um, yeah, I did a webinar, an OCI webinar, some time ago about Micronaut testing, and I created this uh, repository uh, inside my user Elopmar Micro Testing Best Practices. Uh, mm -hmm. This is so you can see. This is uh, yeah, it's about testing. You can see here. Uh, the web page and the video, and this is um, the project for that. Uh, in this specific project, I show you things, or I do things like in this other project that I cannot share. So it's not a specific about that. It's more related to testing, but you have kind of a few examples and good practices uh, that we follow uh, when developing micro applications. Right. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, Ivan, you could also share the link with me, and I would post them uh, on IntelliJ ID blog. So anyone who's not listening to the answer right now, they could follow the uh, source code that you just shared the link. Yeah. The next question is, can Swagger generate schema based on controller class definition? Can Swagger generate a schema based on controller class definition? I, uh, I don't know what is a controller class definition. 
Uh, but uh, what you can do, so I don't know if this is uh, specific by uh, something Swagger specific, but as I mentioned, uh, you have two options. The first one is use Swagger annotations. And the second one is basically remove the Swagger annotations and put the Java doc. And with any of those, we will generate uh, the Swagger API or the Open API uh, documentation. We use this basically because we, as I said, we can add more, more information here. So for example, if I go to the shipment controller, um, so when we create a shipment, we need to pass this POJO, right? Which is a barcode, a destination, and a sensor ID. And with this, I can say in a Swagger annotation that this is a request body, this is the class that implements, I can expect the application type, and then in, in this POJO I'm using here for, for the request body, this is, this is a post request, I can put my Swagger annotations with, with a description and an example. So if you don't, uh, if you don't do this, we try to do our best uh, getting information from this POJO, right? But won't be the same. So uh, my recommendation if, if, is that if you want to generate a complete Swagger compatible API is that use their annotations instead of Javadoc. But if you are working on something fast and you don't want to waste too much time on this, put Javadocs and we will do our, our best to, to generate the, the Open API application, um, API. Uh, documentation. Makes sense. Um, so next question is, do you have support for metric registry or health metrics? Yeah, uh, we support micrometer and there are like uh, a ton of, uh, so here uh, there is, if you open the, uh, if you add the feature metric, uh, sorry, micrometer, uh, we support micrometer with a lot of different endpoint uh, backends. So Azure Monitor, Atlas, CloudWatch, Inatrace, Elastic, Graphite, JMX, uh, New Relic, Prometheus, StaxD, a lot of different things. Uh, you only need to add the right dependency and that's all. And for the health endpoint, I showed you this before. Uh, in Micro 2.1, we are going to add new endpoints for basically for improving the Kubernetes support because in Kubernetes you have different things like the liveness, and the readiness, uh, those concepts. So we will add new endpoints for, for that. Right. Uh, the next question is, any advice on Micronaut and Kotlin? I had issues with the JetBrains compiler with the Kotlin-based Micronaut application, even with enabled annotation processing. Just delegate to Gradle or other ideas? Yeah, uh, there is an open issue actually about uh, so I'm not blaming you, JetBrains folks, but um, so I'm not blaming anyone. But yeah, uh, there is an open issue on on Kotlin to improve the support of KAPT and the annotation processor. So that's why it works with uh, with Gradle, but it doesn't work completely uh, from inside IntelliJ because there is a few bugs there. Uh, so they need to police this support. Yeah, we have an open issue, I think, in our issue tracker, which links to the Get brains uh, with the, to the Kotlin issue uh, that should be fixed to really improve the um, developer experience inside the, the ID with with Kotlin. So I know that a lot of people are using Kotlin with Micronaut, and their experience is is good. But once that issue, that I don't remember the number now, I can find it later and share it with with Mala. Uh, once that issue is fixed, the developer experience will be even better. Right, so probably, uh, the last question for today, yep. which front end framework integrates better with Micronaut? Uh, I'm a back end developer, uh, so I'm not use, I, I don't do front end development, but you can do, you can use anything you want. Uh, if you are creating a, um, a JSON API, uh, you are exposing a JSON API, so you can use Vue, JS, you can use React, you can use any new framework or any old framework, jQuery, you can use anything you want. Uh, you can also, uh, in this project, um, we did, so you can, sorry, not this one. You can uh, embed, you can put your, your, if you want, you can put your, your front end, your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files inside Micronet if you want. So what we did, for example, for the Swagger UI, is that we did that. We put, we use the static resources, so we can serve static resources from the same Micronaut application. And we, when we deploy this project, 
which is all, all, all uh, only um, API JSON API based, we expose the Swagger documentation with this. So this is the directory because this is when where we generate the Swagger API. But you can put here anything on the class path or on the file system and expose that uh, if you want. So let me go back to my slides. I only have um, two slides left, right? Uh, so uh, these are a lot of resources if you want to to know more or connect with us. So this is a Twitter handler. Uh, Gitter is uh, like a Slack, right? We, we the development team is there. So if you have questions, uh, connect to the Gitter, the launch web page I show you, uh, the documentation. This is the entry point for the documentation. There you will find links to all the modules that we have, more than 30 or 40 modules. Uh, how to learn more about Micronaut, guides.micronaut.io. This is really important because we have guides to explain how the framework works, how to do something with the framework in like 15 to 30 minutes. So how do I create an application and I use JWT for security? We have a guide. How do I access to the database? How do I use RabbitMQ? We have a small guides with source code and with explanations to show you that. Uh, our blog, our, our questions, our foundation, uh, the main repository, this one on GitHub is micro core and, and different resources about solutions and things that we provide at OCI. So this is our contact information. So feel free to reach us or feel free to reach me directly on Twitter or whatever. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ivan. I would say an interesting presentation. I really liked how you uh, show, uh, demoed the features of IntelliJ IDEA, how anyone could use them to develop Micronaut applications. So thank you so much again. And we're just in time uh, for uh, the completion of uh, this session today. And thanks to everyone for attending the session and asking all the questions. And stay tuned for our next webinar. We host a webinar for you every month. And if you have any suggestions, please let us know. And you can reach out uh, to me on Twitter at Imala Gupta. So thank you, Ivan. Thank Once you very again. much for having me today. Bye -bye. Thank you all for joining. Bye-bye.